be here and to show up. I, I came expecting for something to change in me. I came expecting something to change in me. Say that with me. In me. I'm not looking at my neighbor. I'm looking at me. I want something to change in me. Hallelujah. I give him glory. I want to give him praise. I want to give him honor. But I'm expecting unity in this house. I'm expecting maturity from the believers in this house today. I'm expecting for you to hear and to receive and then to use what you receive. Amen. Hallelujah to God. I'm expecting something to change in you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to give God all the praise and the honor and the glory. I want to thank everyone for watching online and uh, wherever they are, Ruku or whatever. Hallelujah. I'm giving God the glory today. Whoo! Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Hallelujah. I don't know if can I preach after James Payne was up there preaching like that. Whew. He was coming on, wasn't he? But uh, Bishop, if you're watching, uh, we love you. And Marianne, we thank you, Pastor. I know you're having a good time and preaching it up over there in Texas. So uh, we'll miss you and see you Wednesday. Love you. Love you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to uh, bring a, a short message today. Now, now, I don't want you to get mad, upset with me, but it's already five minutes till 12. Now, and I got a 45-minute, 80-minute message. <laughs> I don't know. So, April? Yeah, mess, yeah. Carlos? Must have been Carlos. But uh, anyway, I have, a, I have a, a message, and I'm going to bring it, praise God, and uh, let the Holy Spirit deal with me and with you. Uh, very, very familiar scripture. I, I hope it is. If you've been a Christian more than a month, you've heard this. People, somebody preach on this. Go <clears throat> Matthew chapter 14, if you will. Hallelujah. I want to thank all of you for being here. My daughter's here, and her son is here. Woo, hallelujah. We have a friend right here. Miss Cox is here today. So I just want to say thank you for all of you that are here. We have another visitor back that I met. I'm so proud to meet her. And uh, God, is, God is moving in this area. He's opening up something for us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, we've been speaking so much about the kingdom. <clears throat> I thought I would talk a little bit about the king. Ha, amen. <laughs> all right. Go with me to Matthew chapter 14. And uh, let me just set it up a little bit. There's a, a huge fantastic miracle that happens as Jesus is on the hillside and he feeds the 5,000 or it says 5,000 men plus women and children so we don't know exactly how many people were there but it's a fantastic miracle a great teaching a hundred different uh, teachings you can get right out of that one scriptures right there but I give God the glory for what he said after that for in verse 22 Go with me to verse 22. It says immediately. Now, immediately doesn't mean that they sat around and talked about it for 10, 15 minutes. It means immediately. So immediately Jesus told his disciples, get in the boat. I want you to get off of this hillside, get off of the banks like the bishop had said. Get off of this hillside and I want you to get in the boat because I have something I want to show you, something I need to teach you and I can't teach it to you here. Now you've seen this miracle, you've seen and heard and you've been involved in it. But now I need to bring you a little further along because I'm not going to be here forever. So I want you to go and get in the boat and get together because there's something I am going to teach you today. Whoo, hallelujah. Oh, I give God the praise. When I started reading that, and that started, uh, you know, just filling up my spirit, uh, and I started thinking about, yes, God, okay, what was it that you wanted to teach them? So he said in the ver next verse, it says, and he had sent them away, uh, the multitudes, but he went up to pray. So every time he gave out, uh, every time a miracle happened and Jesus was given out virtue, uh, he went back and replenished it by prayer. He went in and spoke to God. In other words, he had commun communion with God. He had conversation with the Father. And he went and he spoke to God, and God built him back up. Thank you, Jesus. How many have ever felt depleted and I needed God? Whew, 
and I needed to get somewhere, uh, maybe by myself, uh, where I could hear what God was saying. So much in the world, so much hustle and bustle and so much, you know, worrying about paying bills and making more money and, and doing, you know, more things and, uh, that we get so caught up and we forget to the king. So we talk about his kingdom, but we need to talk about what the king was doing. Praise his name. Hallelujah. So immediately they got in the boat. They followed instructions. And when he had sent them away, he went and to the mountain and he prayed. Now when evening came, uh, verse 24, the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Uh, it was just like a storm happening out there. Now, usually, <clears throat> excuse me, usually we talk about Peter walking on the water, and probably 90% of every message that comes out of this scripture is about uh, Peter getting out of the boat, walking on the water. <clears throat> excuse me. Now, I've been battling all week, <clears throat> but I'm winning. <laughs> Whoo, hallelujah. I want to tell you, I, I talk about healing a lot, and every time I get a message going, the enemy tries to stop me, but it ain't going to happen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. For all week, I've been battling a, 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 some, some, I don't even know what to call it, but it's been hurt and pain and um, sinuses and coughing and all kind of little situations happening, uh, little little symptoms in the body that I have to keep rebuking and casting down. Uh, listen, listen, listen. Don't give in. Don't give in. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, on the fourth watch, which is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., isn't that just like God to uh, come when you're just sound asleep? Uh, you were just having a, who you just got into that zone, you know, that all that stuff in your mind is now out, and you're just whew, soaking it up, uh, just laying there having a good, good night's rest, and here comes Jesus waking you up, talk, wanting to talk to you. See, they were tossed by the waves, and I, I fear today that so many Christians are fulfilling the scripture that says in James that we are tossed by every wind of doctrine. We are moving and listening to everything that the people are saying and the world is saying and even other ministers are saying because it looks good, sounds good, they dress cool and so we want to go over and listen to what they say. I think Bishop touched on that last week. I just wanted to iterate just a little bit about it. This is what's happening. They are in a, in a, in a storm in the middle of the, the waters out there in the, in the ocean. And here comes Jesus walking on the water. Praise God. Whew. It kind of, in, it kind of um, indicates that there was endurance taking place. Uh, it, it's not about Peter. This is about all of them in the boat. There was 12 of them in the boat. Now, Jesus is walking on the water, and they are afraid. The Bible says that right here. It says, uh, on the fourth watch, on the verse 25, Jesus came and walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him, uh, say that word, saw him. Now, now, when the disciples saw him huh, walking on the sea, now they got upset in their spirit, and they got afraid, and they said it must be a ghost. Well, Jesus was taking the law of physics, and, and he was changing the law of physics because why? He's the king. Hallelujah. He's the creator. And now they're walking on it, but they don't recognize that because this is not supposed to happen. You know, a lot of times things happen and we, we don't see it correctly because it's not supposed to happen. That's the way God works. When it doesn't look like it should happen, when it looks like it's over in your life, when you looks like you're about to go to the court and sign the papers, God said, something is about to change. I'm telling you about, I'm expecting something to change in here today. Hallelujah. I know me, 
uh, in my spirit looking at this and praying over this. And, uh, you know, uh, my wife says, are you got it yet? Have you got it yet? I said, well, I've already had it, but I'm just trying to get it going. And you know, I'm trying to make sure I'm saturated. I can't get up here if I'm not saturated with it. I've got to be able to ooze out. I got the oil has got to flow. I can't just be up here talking. I have to have something from the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost is not moving in me, then the Holy Spirit is not moving in you, and nothing's happening. I said, Lord, I've got to have the Holy Spirit. I don't ever get released until I get right. Mimi will tell you, I go all the way. It's not about show. It's certainly not about money. It's about lives being changed. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Now listen, these are scriptures that are so important, especially this next two right here. So the disciples saw him walking on the sea. They were troubled, saying, it's a ghost. And they cried with fear. Now, you've heard this a million times, but let me tell you again. Fear is going to paralyze you. Fear will stop your progress immediately. This is what happens to them. Now, Jesus had told them, get in the boat, and I'm going to show you something different get together. I'm about to bring you up and teach you something that you don't know. That This, this miracle is wonderful, but I'm going to show you something and teach you something deeper. I'm going to just want to go just a little bit deeper in God's word. I just want to go a little bit. I want to know a little bit more today than I knew yesterday, and then I want to know more tomorrow than I knew today. Amen? I want to just keep progressing. I just want to get stronger in God's word. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so for, forgive me for having to drink so much. Water, that is. I, I'm drinking water. <laughs> it's not vodka. You see that? <laughs> Thought I'd throw that in there, Richie. You know, they could take your words and just twist them so fast, Whew, especially if you're behind this pulpit, uh, and they will bring it out. Uh, Billy Graham said uh, uh, he was sitting at a dinner table, and with a bunch of people and other ministers and all, and they brought to him, the, the, the waiter brought to him a, a glass, uh, a stem glass, you know, a wine glass, and, and put Coca-Cola in it. And he said, take that away. And they said, why take it away? It's just Coke. He said, yeah, but they will not perceive that to be Coke. They will, they will turn that around. They will turn it in their favor. And they will start saying what it's not. That's what's happening today. I don't know how you don't get that, why you don't see that, that they are turning what is right and making it wrong. And they are turning what is wrong and making it right. They are changing what we believe. The enemy's relentless. And let me tell you another little story. He's got time. I know we all say he's got short time. He's a short timer. Well, yeah, but while he is getting ready to go, he is working. He's not like a lot of us laid out on Sunday on the couch. He is working. I'm talking about all the time, 24-7. Peter said he's like a roaring lion. Seeking. You know what seeking means? He's continual. He's looking. Mm, Jesus, Jesus. All right, go with the next verse. Because this is really where I want to go. And uh, well, let's just read this, uh, the next three or four verses, and then we'll go back to this verse right here. But immediately Jesus spoke, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, said, Lord, if it is you, <laughs> he still didn't believe it, command me to come out to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous and it was making a huge amount of noise and the waves were, I don't know how high, and he was afraid and began to sink and cry out, Lord, save me. Whew. Go back right here to 27. This is the name of my message 
Be of good cheer, for I'm right here. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Wow, I just did that to wake you up. Hey, here's what Jesus said. I am right here, right now. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. I'm here now. You don't have to call somebody up on the phone. I'm here right now. You ain't going to search me out. I'm here. You just got to recognize that you got to recognize me. That's what you have to do. You have to recognize that I'm in the house. Oh, hallelujah to God. Don't be afraid. Be of good cheer. I was reading Matthew chapter 9, the paralytic man, and Jesus said, be of good cheer. Uh, cheer up. How am I going to cheer up? I am. I can't even move. Jesus said, but be good cheer. Cheer up, because I'm here. Whew. Whew. I'm here. You got something that's paralyzing you, something that's holding you back, so even a decision that you're wrestling with and you can't get it completely strong or straight in your mind. And Jesus is saying to you today, be of good cheer. I'm here. Oh, be of good cheer. Cheer up. Cheer up. I, 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 you know, it bothers me when uh, I, I think I'm going to just go and minister to somebody because they're looking so bad and so down and all, and they go, oh, yes, I'm a born-again Christian. Oh, you are? Oh, uh, okay, I'm sorry, uh, but I couldn't tell. <coughs> uh, I was looking at you. You were looking <laughs> mighty bad. <laughs> What do you think they're thinking about us? I'm talking about the world. What do you think the world is thinking about us? We carry every problem and every pain, every situation. We're not, we don't have good cheer. We don't have good cheer. We don't let other people feel excited around us. We bring the same problems that they bring. We say the same negative stuff. Don't know what I'm going to do. Don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. Don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know where my kids are at. I don't know this. I don't know that. I don't know that. Jesus said, shut up and be of good cheer. Straighten yourself up. Change your body language. Woo, hallelujah. And get yourself focused because I'm here. I'm here right now. It's not tomorrow. I'm here right now. He told the lady in uh, Luke chapter 13 that had the, uh, the um, infirmity for 18 years. She was bent over for 18 years. And asked when he told her, come up here, and he healed her. And she got straight and all in the Pharisees, the church people, all the people in the church, all the ones that were dressed up so nice and all, won't let anybody in unless they got a ring on and come down the front row. But, you know, these, those are the people. And, he, and they said to him, you could have done this Monday. Or why didn't you do this Friday? But well, this is the Sabbath day. It's a holy day. And he says, my God, my God, this is a covenant child. This is Abraham's daughter. Oh, look at her. Are you serious? Look at her. I'm here now. I'm here right now. So, for me to go tomorrow and her to stay another 18 years like that is not right. So I'm here now. Listen, Jesus is here now. The Holy Spirit is moving in this house now. Ooh, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty good up here. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Praise God. So here's what's, so here's what's taking place. Be a good cheer. It is I, he said. It's I. I'm here. So many times we have gone with an issue or a situation, a problem, and we've never searched if Jesus was there. Because doesn't he say if he's here that he'll make all things right? Doesn't Roman H28 say that all things can work to good for them that are called by God? I didn't say he wasn't going to go through it. He said he'll turn it in your favor. Whew, hallelujah to God. 
Hallelujah to God. A, a fear stops you. I've watched so many people stop them. Fear stops them. Whew. My own father had hundreds of opportunity to do something great. Not that he wasn't great. I mean, he was, he was a good man, though. But he always would say, but I, I don't know, which means I'm afraid. You know, when you say, I'm not sure, that means you're, there's something stopping you. It's fear. You might not feel fear, but if you start to speak it, whew, the enemy hears. And he puts that pressure on you. It'll paralyze your movement. It'll stop you from going forward. Paralyze. Mm -mm -mm. You'll stand when you should be moving. And actually, verse, reverse that, you'll be moving when you should be standing. <laughs> Whew, glory to God. Stand, therefore stand. Amen? This is what healing represents to me. When I, when I look at these scriptures here, uh, be of good cheer. Keep your countenance. Don't, don't, don't bow down. Don't allow the enemy in. Don't talk negative. Think about God. Speak to him. Pray to him. Go out and sit on the porch or something by yourself. Hallelujah. And just talk to him. Uh, you, you know, the neighbors won't worry about it. They, they, they'll, they'll, they'll feel like you're okay. Uh, just go ahead and pray. Just say something to him. Uh, it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot. Uh, get in the boat. <laughs> I love that. Get in the boat. But here's, here's what healing, these scriptures, why they represent healing to me. Let me show you. Uh, there's three types of healings. Now, all of us want miracles, and that's one type of healing. Uh, in in uh, Acts chapter 3, there was the man standing at the gate, or no, he was sitting at the gate for 40 years. He's been there for 40 years. Uh, he had no faith. He, he wasn't ex expecting, he didn't go to church. He didn't know who Jesus was. Uh, he was sitting there. And God said, okay, I'm going to use you guys to heal this young man. And, 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 and they had expectation, but he didn't. Uh, it says that he was expecting what? A handout. I, I got to pay my way. I got to be able to buy some bread for the household. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, just, I'm just here. They do everything, so I got to earn a few pennies. And so Paul, uh, Peter and John were walking in, and they grabbed him and pulled him up. You know the thing? That's a miracle. His feet became strong. His muscles all became strong. He stood up, and he started to praise and worship God. Well, listen, listen. That's a miracle. I, I want to see miracles. How many want to see miracles? I want to see miracles. But then there was conditional healing, and a conditional healing works this way. Like uh, the prophet told Naaman, Naaman, who had leprosy, was a king. He said, go to the Jordan River and Dip down seven times. That was a condition in it. You want to be healed? Go and do what I'm telling you to do. Go and sit in the river. Get up and down seven times. And when you get up the seven times, leprosy is going to be gone. That's a process. That's, that's some time involved. That's something that kind of looks like a little crazy when you stop like maybe the third time and you say, Ain't nothing happening. So many of us have been in church for so long, and we have talked about so many things over and over again, and we say there ain't nothing to it. Ain't nothing happening. Uh, we come just because it's a meeting place. Uh, we come because our neighbors expect us to go to church. Uh, we come because grandma and mama always took us to church. But I come today, and let me tell you what, I come because I want to come. I come because I have a necessity to come. I, I have a need in my spirit to come. Praise God. I don't, I don't look at Sunday for going somewhere out of town or, or going to the beach or whatever, which is nothing. I'm not saying anything wrong with that. I'm just saying my, my desire is to be, whew, I'm here now. God said, I'm here. Excuse me. <laughs> I don't normally drink this much. <laughs> but I am. It's water. It's water. <clears throat> the next one 
This is the hardest one. It's progression. Your body's been programmed. See, he said, get in the boat. There's something I'm going to show you, something else I want to, I want to teach you. This is progression. Uh, it, it, when I was a young man, and maybe you've heard the story before, I, I got hurt on a bulldozer. And, um, <clears throat> and I had to have a back operation. And pretty, pretty quick, they did it pretty quick. And it was successful. It, it came off really good. It was successful. Uh, and this is in the 60s, and that's, that was successful for sure. <clears throat> it had no microscopic little one inch. You know how to tell you? I'm, uh, yeah. This was like this. And um, six years later, I got hurt again. Well, one is because I was a little stubborn, and um, they told me to get out of that profession and do something different. And I said, no, I'm going to stay in this. I don't, see, but I didn't know God. See, see, I was brought up Catholic, and I didn't know God in this personal, personal way. I didn't know about healing or anything like that. So I listened to who? I listened to the world. See, I listened to what they were saying. And I listened to what my parents were saying. And I listened to what the doctor said. And I listened and I listened. And so I did what they said. See, if you listen to them long enough, you will follow. And you will do what they say. And if you watch them long enough, you believe their lie. You believe it. Now, just put that in your pipe and smoke it later. Mm. Did you get it? And if you've got one of them, uh, <laughs> don't say it. Okay, <laughs> Richie said don't say it. But if you got one anyway, buy one of them and do it. <laughs> Praise his mighty name. Listen, I, I want, so, so let, me, let me finish this. So that, was, so that was six years in between, but I was in the world. So Now, in them six years, what the devil didn't know <laughs> is I was learning stuff about God. See, I was learning about Jesus. I was going to pray me. We were doing a lot of stuff for God, and well, I was 29 years old, and it happened to me again. I've already been operating on it twice. No, I guess I was about the next year, about 30 years old. And so I was hurting bad, same symptoms. See, it's what the devil, he doesn't change. He doesn't change anything. It's the same symptom. But Jesus said, I'm here right now. But it, it's the same symptom that's in your spirit right now. Look, you're listening to what the devil's got to say. I hope he gets done. It's 20 after 12. My God. <laughs> Remember, I only got up here, it was 5 till. Thank you very much, Nina. Nina, I watched the show this morning. It was called Nina's World. But it was a cartoon. Is that anything about you? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. We're friends, right? Well, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> all right. So, so, I'm, so, this, so I got, I'm, I'm down again. And so this is the... The worst part, I could hardly move. I got four. I have four children, and I'm telling God all this. You know, I have four children, and uh, and I don't know anything about progressive healing. I'm looking for miracle. I'm asking God a miracle. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. But God said, "Listen, you don't understand. This is a test. It's your test. You're not listening. Don't listen to what they got to say. They mean well. Now they mean well. Go to the doctor. Do this. Go down and get your blood work. Go ahead and do that. Do that. Do that. Listen, they were telling me that all week this week, but I'm standing right here healed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm standing here right now healed, but not back then. I would have never been able to do this, but I've had progression. I've progressed. I've gotten stronger. I've gotten better. I got to know him more, and the more I got to know him, the more I could what? Trust him. Ha! Whoo! Hallelujah. So I'm not, I'm not going to make this a long time. So I'm having problems like this. I couldn't even get to the sink to in the morning. I had to get up an hour, hour and a half early before. I, and I went to work. Uh, listen, say, I went to work. Uh, well, I got a fever 101, but I what? went to work. Get up and go to work. But also Sunday morning, get up and come to church. Hallelujah. You know, it's really not for God. It's for you. 
So, I, so I'm, doing, I'm doing all that. How many understand? Miracle, conditional, and now this is progression. This is what's happening right here. This is, he went one step, two step, five step, six step. These things were happening for the disciples in the boat. They were learning something. They were hearing. They were watching. They were listening. And now they're in a storm, and now they have to depend on God, and they have to depend on Jesus, and they were afraid. I was afraid of many mornings. I could cry now for how many tears I shed looking at my little kids. All my kids was young and my wife. And, I, and, and, and the doctor said, uh, 60, 40%, you need to change everything. You are not going to be able to do this work. Now, that, that was in there somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. But I, you know what I did? I put this out of my mind. And see, so I'm, I, it took take me a while to get it all back in order. But these things did happen. So now I'm having this problem and I can't get up. I'm hurting. Same symptoms. First operation I could figure that was a wreck on a, motor, I mean, on a bulldozer. Second operation was seven years later I did wrong. Now I'm in real trouble. But God said to me, now, now I have to iterate this. Do not do anything unless God speaks to you. Now, I am not talking about not going to the doctor. I'm not advocating that or don't go or don't listen and don't go to the emergency room. I'm not saying none of that. You know, I'm not telling you not to get a blood transfusion if you need one. I'm telling you that when God speaks, if you're close enough, and they were close, and you don't see him as <laughs> As a ghost, but you see him as the powerful king of kings, the Lord of lords. That you realize that his name is above every name. No matter what is written, his name is above the name. When you realize that, and when you know in your heart, you can't do this otherwise. And you know in your spirit that God is saying to you, wait, wait, don't do that yet. Wait, 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 I waited Two years. Robert, what's Robert? Two years. Am I lying? Might have been more than two years. It's my daughter, my wife. Am I lying? Over two years, somewhere in there. I knew about miracles, Bobby. I knew about conditional but now I didn't understand this until I was reading it this, this whole week but God said listen it's not faith that heals you see a lot of people got this like oh it's my faith no it wasn't faith that healed me it was faith that brought me to the healer it was my faith that brought me to the healer the healer did the healing in me. Then I had to recognize. See, they had to recognize that it was, he said, it's I. It is I. So I waited. And I waited. And I grew stronger and stronger. I was in church. I went to, the, I went to Bible studies. I, went to, I drove hundreds of miles to go to meetings to hear some of these uh, top men of God at the time, these generals. I, I, I wanted to get more. I want, how many have ever done that? I want to hear more. I want to go more. I want to know more. I'm not done. See, a lot of people say, your age, you're done. No, I'm not done. Do I look done? Hallelujah. I'm not done. I'm not quitting. If I can't get up these stairs, I'll just get down there. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I was fearful, but I had a subsidence. No, I can't listen to that. No. I can't listen to that. No, I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be healed. I believe it. I believe it. I'm standing on God's word. I read the scriptures. I read the scriptures. I'm standing on God's word. I'm standing on God. I'm, and every morning, I had the same problem. Every morning, I was like that. By the time I got to work, I might have been almost straight. Or I felt straight, you know. Your, your body has a way of, you know, fixing it. Fixing it. Even though you're like this, you feel straight. My son David used to go around walking like this. This is daddy. He's walking like this. 
But I felt straight, praise God. I am, I am straight. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. <laughs> Patty said, ooh. All right, listen to me a minute. And I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Two years or whatever it was. And God told me, this is a test. I've never been in a test that long. I mean, that's a long test. And one morning, <laughs> one morning, ha, Jesus was there all the time. But one morning, I saw him. See, one morning, I saw him because I was looking in the mirror. When I got up, I wasn't bent over. I was standing up straight. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I'm telling you the truth. That's the facts from me. I'm telling you the honest truth. When I realized it was a test from God, I was able to go through it a little better. It was hurtful. It was painful. It was driving me up the wall. Come on, come on. Let's be, let's be human. I was hurting. But yet, I kept on moving. It's not about me now. This is about faith in the healer. Praise his name. Did I have fear? Yes. I went through every one of these stations that these disciples went through. I got in the boat. I prayed. I was tossed. I was, uh, I was waiting for Jesus. I know the disciples, we saw him. Uh, he asked me to be of good cheer, uh, have be joy, be joyful. And I tried, I really tried. He said, it's I, it's me, I'm here, I'm in your life, I'm in your heart, I'm in your spirit, I'm with you wherever you go, I'm in the car, I am with you. I'm going to heal you, I'm going to heal you, because your word said he's going to heal me. See, his word said it. I had to keep going back to the word. I had nine scriptures that I would recite or quote in my spirit about healing. You know, when, when he told Joshua to meditate, he wasn't just telling him to, you know, go around humming. He said, I want you to get the word, and I want you to put it in, and I want you to meditate. Think, think, think. then you will make your own way. Whew, successful. Then you will make your own way successful. Whew. I got up and was looking in the mirror. And Jesus was there. Because where's Jesus at? He's in you. And for two years, I couldn't see him. <laughs> but I got up. I got up. No, he got up. Praise God. But I got up too. And once I got up, once I realized it, this was a test. My body was healed, and that's 35 years ago. There's the proof. The proof. I can show you my back. It's the scars this long. They don't do this little, it's this long. But praise God. My son, your bishop, was lying in the hospital at 14 years old. Enemy trying to take him out. But at that time, I knew a little something about God and about healing. I'm not letting it go. No, we stayed in the room. We laid hands on him. We prayed for him. They said, well, it's a possibility. We got to go in and do an exploratory. We're looking for what's the cause in this bottom, this pain in the bottom of his, his uh, back down here in his spinal cord, and it could be terrible word cancer we prayed we believed we stood on God's word there was a hundred miracles that happened during the time but he still was in the bed now, now what am I trying to try to tell you I'm trying to tell you something sometimes it takes time God has a process of time don't give up in well doing don't give in to what the enemy is trying to say to you the doctors went in. We gave him permission. 
And never forget the guy's name was Dr. Cannon. And he said when he came back out, he took off his mask like that, and we were holding our breath. <laughs> so, I mean, faith. You can have faith. But we still got feelings. I don't know how to suppress them all. But I did have feelings about it. I was, can I say, can I say this without blowing my message? I was worried sick. I was worried about it. But then God said, stop worrying about it. Just give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. <clears throat> and then we would give it to him. We would give it to him. And then we'd worry about it. Come on. Can I, can I be real? Can we be real? It's almost time to go. Uh, <clears throat> can we be real? I mean, I had strong faith. I was believing God, trusting God. But then about an hour later, I'd be going, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'm not sure. That's what that means. I'm not sure. It's my son. The Lord is my son. He's only 14. He's only 14. God knew he's going to be here. God knew he was going to be here. See, he knew it all the time that he was going to be here. Ha! See, God's got it already out here like this. And we're over here. And we're being tested to get to here. And I said, oh, God. God, I don't know that until I got here. And when I walk, come up here 20 years ago and watching my son preach. Well, he's been preaching 30 years or 40 years. I don't know. How old are you, son? I don't know. I think he's 55. Isn't it? Something like that. He's been preaching since he was like 14, 15. I'd be preaching after that too. Praise God. All right. Amen. All right, let me, let me get done. Let me close it. Let me close it. Don't get antsy. I thought about it many, many times, and you can think about this. What would have happened? What would have happened to him if we gave up? See, you might have children out there right now. Don't give up. You might have a spouse you've been praying for for years don't give up but keep praying see Jesus the first thing he said was I'm going to go pray let God know your heart well he already knows yes he already knows he wants you to tell him he wants you to tell him hallelujah praise God how many understand what I'm talking about Peter did get out of the boat. <clears throat> I don't know how many steps he took or whatever. I don't know. But just amazing just to get out and stand on it would be amazing. Whew, praise God. Physics was changed. Ooh, God. Thank you, Jesus. But it said that he heard the voice of the wind. Can I tell you? That there's a lot of voices and they're full of wind and they're making a lot of noise but if you want to see something happen in your life you need to go home and study this today and just say God I know you're here right now I want to put my problems like <clears throat> Peter said for you to cast your care on him for he cares for you. Hallelujah. 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 Can you stand up with me? Praise God. Let's give God the glory. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. What's the matter? I don't get no music. Come on, man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, will you guys just take somebody's hand? Take somebody's hand. Hold somebody's hand. Oh, I don't like them. Okay, we'll change. Get on the other side. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take somebody's hand. Visitors, we're usually not this radical. We're probably worse. But anyway, <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Now lift both those hands up. Yes, Lord. And I, I just want you to say yes. yes. I know you're here right now thank you thank you jesus let healing flow through my hands to the next person to that next one to the next one to the next lord 
This is what we are right here, a conduit. We are a conduit for the kingdom to flow through us. God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hug somebody. Be careful on the fourth. Woo. See y'all next week. Visitors. Okay. Yeah, now look, don't forget, go over to Texas Roadhouse today, right? And take this with you. And if you're a visitor, go out that door. We'll meet you out there. If you go into Texas Roadhouse, write the church name on the bulletin. Because it's not on there anywhere. I didn't hear. Love you. Love you.